G'day and welcome to Cloud Cartographer. Uh, just got back from KubeCon, had a wonderful time out there, um, and wanted to do a quick set of demos on a question I was asked about um, a lot, which was how to create a lightweight uh, CICD pipeline um, for Kubernetes. And I gave a number of demos at the uh, at the Daya stand. I just kind of wanted wanted to record the demo so that people could take a look and see what they thought. Um, so what we have here, and like all good demos, we'll start with some code. <laughs> um, so this is actually my application code. So I'm putting my application developer hat on right now, and I'm just going to make a change um, to some source code here. Not a big change. I'm just going to change this JavaScript from game to game two. All right. So let's show you what we've done here, so we can see my change. Bumped JS version. I'm going to push that out to GitHub. All right, so here's my repo. So I'll pop over here to um, Jenkins. And what we have is a Jenkins setup here, and it's um, configured to take a look at that repo. So it's actually got a webhook that's fired off that told it somebody's committed to the dev branch. And what we can see here is we have build number four on the dev branch kicking up now. Now this is using Jenkins pipelines and the GitHub organization plugin. Um, and what we have here is all the different steps that a user configurable here. Um, and it's going to run through all these stages and produce an output. So what this, what's happening right now is this has just spun up a worker and the worker is taking on the, um, the responsibility of that job. Now while we're waiting for that worker to actually go through, one of the nice things about Jenkins pipelines is that you actually check in the build um, steps into your repo. So it kind of gives you that experience that you come to expect with services like Travis or BuildKite or Circle, where you have all your um, build steps, build metadata actually checked into your repo, which is really nice because you obviously can use um, all your Git tools to, to push and make changes to your deployment pipeline. Um, the other great fact is that uh, no longer are your CI CD pipelines actually large battle tanks. Um, so they, um, assuming you have a way to ship your build logs and you're already putting your artifacts somewhere else, your um, Jenkins infra infrastructure can virtually become stateless. So um, we have all the steps defined here, so they were on the pipeline. Here's the preparation step, the compile, the test, um, and the publish. Now, on the dev branch, I have it configured so that it's only going to compile and create a container and push that container to Quay. Um, and then we can uh, take a look at that. So let's just pop back over here and see where we are. So this has actually happened. And as part of my build pipeline, I've defined I want to push up the container to Quay so that I can pull it down. I'm not actually going to deploy it. So you can see here that the dev branch, this um, commit char. So let's go take a look at, swap over to the dev branch here. Okay. And we could see uh, this. We take a look at the commits. Okay, so we can see that that. Um, that change that I checked in now has become uh, traceable all the way through to the container artifact, which is nice. And then I can go and pull it down. Um, so let's keep going through through the workflow here. Uh, obviously, I would test that and make sure that I'm happy with it. Then I could issue a pull request. OK, so let's just get that pull request out there. 37. Okay, so here's our pull request. Okay. Exactly what we're expecting. And this should actually be getting built by the system right now. So let's go and take a look. So we see this PR has been picked up. I just open a new window here and have a look at this pull request from a logged in user. I should be able to see um, 
Okay, so this this PRs, the details there are available. I can jump over to the build here and, and grab it out. So again, that's going to build and produce an artifact. Um, and you could imagine in the deployment phase uh, that you actually, in the PR phase, you may push it to an E2E e e environment or some kind of testing environment that um, you can run your integration tests against. So that's following the same steps. Um, and then it's going to get pushed out. Now, just for bonus points here, this is all um, running on top of Kubernetes. So we're using the Kubernetes plugin here, and this Jenkins chart is available under the Helm charts repo. Uh, so the details out of the box, you'll have a bootstrap to actually lay down its workers on, um, on your Kubernetes cluster that it's running on. So that's quite nice. You have a very nice lightweight uh, Kubernetes, uh, Jenkins cluster that you can put on your Kubernetes infrastructure. So this build is happening right now. Again, that's finished. We should end up with um, a PR container, which is obviously the base branch plus changes. So we have this, and we could send that out to an E2E environment, um, as mentioned. And then just following the same, same kind of workflow here, we can we should have a green light and we should be able to go over and let's just go back to this pill okay we should be able to merge this now the difference on merging to master is that I actually have uh, let's have a look here in the Jenkins file I have if, if we're on master we'll actually go and do a helm deploy now another another feature that I'm using is an external uh, library so I have this library defined so that I can um, wrap all my build steps in different functions. And, um, you know, as a cloud platform team, you could provide functions that people could pull in. So Helm Deploy takes in, um, a map of arguments in, and basically what it comes down to here is actually just doing a Helm upgrade against a chart. So that's going to push it out. So Helm gives you a really slick way to actually package up your chart um, and deploy it and obviously you can use Helm locally with that updated artifact or you can use it in your production environment. Now about a year ago I built a very similar pipeline to this um, with some colleagues of mine and we were using kubectl patch and apply and there was a lot of um, template rendering going in. Helm is a very slick way just to avoid all of that and obviously there's just one command in the deployment step here. And if we're using Helm um, even if we want to roll back or change things, everything's on the server side component and tiller. So uh, it makes for a really lightweight deployment pipeline. So what we should see here is the master builds going off. I can actually go over to here and, and here is my actual application running as it stands, pre-upgrade. So we can see that this is um, on the existing version and we should see that um, once this thing is actually pushed out, we should have that updated. Now there's some nice, uh, uh, in the in the Croc, Croc Hunter repo here, you can have a look at the chart, you can have a look at what's going on. I'm actually having Ingress created, um, I've issued certificates, um, so it's, you know, it's actually going out and it will update all the Ingresses. Okay, that should have happened, and it sounds like somebody's going to start an angle grinder, so probably just in time. We'll probably helm list and actually... Have a look at this croc hunter and see that we've just deployed it right now and we should be out here here's the updated version i'm shooting fish and i'm actually publishing out the commit right here so we should be able to just to double check that that is indeed uh, where we're at commits right so again traceability all the way through so, um, you know, this is a great example of a very lightweight pipeline using Helm to do the deployment step, and everything is bundled up using Jenkins, so obviously you can have an on-prem um, CI build pipeline and system all using Helm. So thanks for tuning in. Appreciate any feedback, um, and let me know if you like this video. Cheers.